Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, I'm Bennett and today I'll tell you how to play any VR game in your Steam VR library directly on your Oculus Quest without any cable in wireless. Before starting I invite you to hit like, subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date. In the description you can find the Evo Games Facebook page and the Instant Gaming website to buy your favorite games at discounted prices. So to connect your Quest to your PC wirelessly and take the advantage of entire Steam VR library, you need to use softwares called Riftcat and Bridge, which allow you to stream games from your PC to the Quest. This means that if your PC is powerful enough to run that game, you can play it on your Quest without the need for the cable, thanks to a Wi-Fi connection between the headset and your PC. Before starting with this guide, know that this process requires some practicality with the technical part, but I will try to be as clear and simple as possible in the explanation. In this video I show you how to install ADB drivers, load bridge, run Riftcat on your PC and then stream Steam VR games wirelessly to your Oculus Quest. To make things easier for you I have included all the necessary links into the description. So don't waste any more time and let's get into it. First off, it's important to clarify that Riftcat and Reach works great even if the streaming quality depends a lot on your hardware and the speed of your Wi-Fi. A little expense is also required to complete the steps in this guide. First of all, the free version of Riftcat and Reach allow a game session of 10 minutes only. So if you want the full version, you will have to buy it at the cost of 15 euros. To download the trial version or purchase the full version, follow the link in the description, download Riftcat Reach. You also need a Wi-Fi router. If you already have a powerful router, well, that's good for you. Although I recommend you to buy one at 5 GHz to get the best streaming fluidity without slowdowns or loss of quality. You may also encounter a problem with the key mapping. In fact, the controllers showing during streamings are those of the ATC Vive headsets. So this means that in some games the Oculus controller keys may not work or may not correspond to the expected comments. So you have been warned about this probability. Anyway, this is an old problem from the first version, so probably an update has been made in the meantime and so what I'm telling to you is already been solved. Anyway, once you've learned about the possibility and probabilities you might encounter, let's see what you need to complete the steps in this guide. First of all, of course, you need an Oculus Quest headset. As I have already explained it to you in the previous video to use SideQuest and install games and apps inside the headset, you will also need a USB Type-C to Type-A adapter but but only if your PC does not have a USB Type-C port already. Connect to the PC, you can use the cable that is supplied in the package. As already mentioned, you also need a Wi-Fi router. If you have an internet connection with which a modem was also provided, you probably already have it. But if you have one at 2.4 GHz, you may encounter some problems with fluidity, some freezing, stuttering and some other problems related to streaming speed. To avoid totally these problems, I highly recommend a 5 GHz router. These kinds of routers are also provided when you activate a new internet connection, especially if optical fiber. Anyway, you must have a router that allows you to create a local Wi-Fi network which you can connect your Oculus Quest. If you are at your first experience with VR, you will also have to test the capabilities of your PC. Even if this check should have been done even before buying the headset. But if you are in this video, it means that you have already done it. I hope. However, I have included in the description the link to test your PC through the Steam VR app, which will test your PC telling you if it's ready for VR or not. In addition, in the first version of Riftcat, there was a problem with PCs equipped with AMD cards, but in the meantime, it has been solved. Now let's move on to the actual guide. Step 1 Enable the developer account on the Oculus account and the Oculus headset. Well, I'm not going to explain you in this video. 
because I already did an entire video dedicated only to this passage. So follow the link in description, step one, do all the passage in that video and then come back here. Well, once you have done the step one, let's go ahead to step two, install Steam VR and additional stream settings. I hope you already have a Steam account and downloaded the client on your PC because I'm not going to explain you in this video how to do it. So if you haven't, do it and then come back here to this guide. Now once you have downloaded the Steam client and registered your Steam account, go to your Steam account store and download Steam VR. Of course it's free. Once downloaded and installed, restart your PC. I also recommend you to install advanced Steam settings, which will allow you to fix things on the fly directly from the Stream VR menu, such as being stuck on the ground or if you need to adjust the limits of your area. All you have to do is to click on the link in the description, download Steam Advanced Settings and start the download of the installer by downloading the latest version. Once the download is complete, start the installation and when it's finished, you can go to step 3. Step 3, download RiftCat, Reach and ADB driver. If you watched the video on how to create a developer account, you already installed ADB driver. So if you did, skip that passage. Anyway, first click on the link in the description to download RiftCat. And then click on the link to download the Reach APK for Quest. And if you didn't already, download ADB driver. Now that you have these three files downloaded, first start the RiftCat installation on your PC and complete it by following the various guided steps. After installing in it, close it and go back to the three downloaded files. Extract the file from the ADB tool package using WinRAR. Okay, if you don't have WinRAR, you can download it by following the link in the description. Or if you don't like WinRAR, you can use any other program to extract packages. Anyway, once you extracted all the contents from the archive to a folder, move Ridge APK into the same folder you just created. Now go into the folder, select the entire content, right click and copy. Now go to your C directory users and enter the folder with your name and paste all the files and folders you copied. If you can find a folder with your name, then do this operation in the default user folder. So C two dots users slash user. Step four reach ADB installation and side loading into Quest. For this step, connect your Quest to the PC via the supplied USB cable. If your PC does not have a USB Type-C port, use a USB Type-C to Type-A adapter. Now you need to open the command prompt. To do this, go to the line of text at the bottom left of your desktop, the one next to the Windows logo. Type CMD and click on the executable that appears command prompt. I suggest you to execute it as administrator administrator, so right click on it and execute as admin. Now into the prompt type adb and hit enter, then type adb space devices and press enter. If you have done everything correctly, you should see the serial number of your headset. But if you see unauthorized, you must wear the headset and authorize USB debugging. Remember to check the box, remember on this computer. After you have given the OK, remove the headset from your head and check that everything has been received by the system simply by typing again ADB space devices and enter. If everything went well, you should see the serial number of your headset and the words authorized. Now still on the prompt of the comments, type ADB space install space minus G space bridge quest 1 without any spaces dot ap key if everything went well you should see successful install it otherwise just trash your pc okay now take a breath Congratulate with yourself because the hardest part is done. Let's move on the next step. Step 5. Run Ridge on the Quest and RiftCat on the PC. Now every time you put the headset and go to the library, you will find the Ridge app in the list of unknown sources. Start Ridge from the headset and you will find yourself inside a window waiting for the connection from the PC. Now run RiftCat on the PC. I remind you that the free version allow you to do sessions of 10 minutes. The license for unlimited and unrestricted 
could use costs 15 euros or dollars or whatever. However, after starting RiftCAD, click on the play button and you will receive this window from which you can adjust the streaming quality on the fly and set the game audio stream directly on the headset. Usually, with a PC that meets the minimum requirements for VR, setting the slider to 8 will give you a good balance between quality and performance stability. Otherwise, if you like to play with the settings, you can also switch to manual settings. Now, wearing your headset, now you will find yourself inside the room in Steam VR, where you can use your controllers to choose the game you want. Before playing, I recommend that you go to the Steam VR game area settings and repeat the calibration of the floor and the limits of the game area from the beginning in order to avoid problems such as being stuck on the floor or not being able to reach some object on the floor because this is lower than the actual floor of your room. Before to end this video, I want to answer a question you may already be asking yourself. Is all this worth? Well, in my opinion, yes, because thanks to these steps, you will have the opportunity to play any games in the Steam VR library, even those that are not in the Oculus library, such as Half-Life Alex. Just remember that this is always a streaming and depending on the performance of your PC and especially your router, you may encounter some problems such as frames drop, resolution drops, freezing and other problems during the game. Also, the visual quality is of course lower than a game that is natively played on the Quest. For example, if you run Beat Saber on the Quest, it will have, let's say, visual quality 100, while if you stream the same game from the PC, it will have slightly lower resolution, let's say 80, 90 visual quality. However, if you think that this gives you the chance to play any games directly on the Quest without cables, I would say that is it absolutely worth it. And then there is another advantage. If a game present in the Oculus library sold at full price is also present in the Steam library, you can find it at discounted prices both on Steam and for example on instant gaming by purchasing the key. Well, yeah, so I guess it's worth it. Okay fans, if you liked the video and it was useful to you, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, activate the bell to receive notification on the new videos and make your request in the comments. For now it's all, thanks for watching, Bennett out, greetings.